Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. As the title of the video states, today I'm going to be telling you guys how you can pass organic chemistry the lazy way. Now when I say the lazy way, I don't mean the do nothing kind of lazy. I mean the do the bare minimum kind of lazy. So if you came to this video thinking that I have some superhuman way to help you guys throw up the right answers on the exam, I'm sorry to disappoint. But don't worry guys, with these tips, you can be sure to pass organic chemistry the first time around while doing the bare minimum. As someone who's lazy myself, I am in no place to judge why you're lazy or why you clicked on this video. So let's just cut to the chase. By the way, I'm in no way sponsored in this video. These are all just the resources that I found helpful. Also, don't forget to hit that big red subscribe button down below because it helps to support my channel, which helps me to provide free content and resources to you all. Ooh, now that all those housekeeping duties are done, let's actually get on with the video. All right, so my first tip is to get a molecular model kit. So what is a molecular model kit? Well, organic chemistry is very 3D. So molecular model kits help to see, help you to see the molecules in a 3D pattern right in front of your face. You can build molecules, disassemble molecules. So the kit comes with small plastic circular balls which resemble atoms and you can connect them together um, with bonds to create molecules. Now actually physically building the molecule helps you to visualize it and determine chirality, um, molecular structure, and even molecular geometry. This way you don't really have to think about it, you can just build it. And heads up, it's kind of fun, so don't get too distracted on test day. Some of these molecular model kits are very cheap. I have done the research for you guys and found some on Amazon that are below $15, so check the link down below and you can order yours from there. Alright, my second tip is to please review the material regularly. So the unique thing about organic chemistry is it builds on itself. So if you don't know chapter 1, you're not really going to understand chapter 5 or chapter 10 or chapter 12. You need to know the content from previous chapters to do relatively well on future chapters. Now the good news, or the not so good news, depending on your preference, is that organic chemistry doesn't really depend on general chemistry. So if you've forgotten all that stuff, you're, you're chilling. I mean, it's all fine. So make sure to go over all lecture notes and practice problems that your professor might have done in class and make sure you can solve them out on your own without your notes so that if a similar question were to appear on your exam, you can solve it. All right, tip number three is practice, practice, practice. Now, I know what you're thinking. If you're lazy like me, you might be wondering why on earth would I do practice problems if my professor isn't even taking them up for a grade? I mean, why would I spend my time doing that if I could just sit in my bed and stare at the wall, right? Anyways, don't do this. Bad idea. As I said before, if you want to pass organic chemistry, you got to put in some work. The more practice problems you do, the more comfortable you will be on the questions that will be on your exam because I'm sure the exam is not going to ask just a straight up simple question. The professor is probably going to put a whole reaction on there and ask you to draw the products. Now I know some of y'all can just go to class and just know exactly what to do on the exam and come out with a 99% but if you're here watching this video you should probably just do the practice problems. Honestly, my honest opinion on all of this is that practice problems are gonna give you more reward than just looking over lecture notes and trying to understand concepts. When you do practice problems, you're learning the concepts, but you're also applying it to a test-like question. And then once you're done doing all the practice questions or how many ever you're doing for the day, chill, relax, be lazy, stare at your wall, do whatever you want. All right, my fourth tip is to attend office hours. Office hours can be a huge resource for my lazy people out there that sleep in class or sleep through class. My friends, this is the place you need to be. This is the place where you can ask your professor questions, get one-on-one -on -one help, understand the lecture, understand practice questions, that you've solved out or work with your professor to solve out questions or whatever you may need. And a bonus is that this is also a way to build a relationship with your professor because if your professor hates you, good luck passing orgo, my friend. All right, tip number five is additional or supplemental resources. So is your teacher trash at teaching? 
or do they just yell at you when you go to office hours? Well then, I found a replacement for you guys. Free online resources for y'all to use to get a good grade in Orgo. Now I know what you might be thinking, the organic chemistry tutor. We all know him, we love him, his YouTube channel has saved our lives in many courses. But man, his videos just don't do it for me for organic chemistry. Pretty ironic, I know. Rather, I really like Leia for size YouTube channel. I will link her uh, channel down below so you guys can look at that. She really goes through a lot of practice problems, uses mnemonics, and really makes it simple, breaks it down for dummies like me. You can also always use Khan Academy as well. These two resources have been a lifesaver for me in this class. Well guys, that brings us to the end of the video. These were my five tips on passing organic chemistry your first time around. If you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button. And if you have any comments, questions, suggestions, leave them in the comments below and I'll get back to you ASAP. As always, thanks for choosing the lazy guide and I'll see y'all next time.